Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Bob Constantine. I'm here today representing NHJury.com. Our slogan is no victim, no crime. I'd like you to know that I don't support theft, assault, fraud, or anything at all like that. I believe that I own myself, and I think everybody in here owns themselves. I think when we seek to own other people, that's when the beginning of a crime is perpetrated. I think before we talk about something that is criminal, I think we first need to define what a crime is. Some things will always be crimes, harming another person, death, fraud, assault. Some things are prohibited, technically they're crimes, but I don't really think they are. It was prohibited to help a runaway slave or to hide a Jew in your attic in Nazi Germany. I'd break those laws today. What's a victimless crime? Somebody asked that, and I think that's a good question. I think the answer to that easy answer is, a victimless crime is one in which the accused has not acted in a manner harmful to another. In other words, nothing was stolen, no property damage, no other party was hurt, no other real person, that is. Where we are now is, the accused, in many instances, has broken some shall or shall not statute of law. In many of these cases, almost all of them, the state assumes the role of the victim. And no matter that in most of these cases, the accused is the real victim and the state is the assailant. Now, I'd like to point out, in the body of the bill, uh, it doesn't negate any existing laws. It merely reinforces the concept that you're innocent until you're proven guilty. It places the burden of proving that there was a victim on the plaintiff, where it belongs. The highest prison population in the world, it's not Russia, it's not China, it's right here in the United States. I don't know how many laws we have in the United States. I mean, the gentleman sponsoring the bill said we have 11,000 laws here. I believe him. So I think I'd also like to point out that those opposing this bill, once again, there's no one here from the public. It's, it's those with a mercenary self-interest. All I want, and I think all, all the other people who are going to testify after me in favor of this bill, is to be left alone. That doesn't mean I want to harm other people or assault people or anything at all like that. I, I don't want to bring the conversation over there. I can tell you absolutely that when you do those things, you're committing a crime. Uh, somebody earlier today mentioned, I believe it was uh, somebody that testified from the Attorney General's office, that everyone in the state is victimized by some crimes. Well, then I would ask, what harm in asking just one of those victims to appear in court and prove that they were victimized? That's my testimony. I did have a question. I may have a question. Absolutely. I'm just not quite sure how to phrase it. We'll go for it. <clears throat> when the Attorney General's office defends a law, they act for the people. So if they're bringing what you refer to as a victimless crime, mm -hmm. they are acting on behalf of the people of New Hampshire. Well, I you, you're framing the question as if what you're saying is absolutely true, and I think that's where our basic disagreement is. I think a lot of times um, they are, for instance, if, if I attacked you or stole your stuff, clearly I victimized you. If they're bringing a charge against me because I like to sit in my living room and not drink alcohol and, and maybe smoke a joint or something like that, and the Attorney General wants to come and, and bring the state against me, they're not defending anyone. They're assailing me. There's, there's a pretty big distinction here. And I think in all of the testimony, people are going to run around, oh, there'll be chaos and people will be, you know, climbing trees and jumping on people's heads and doing all kinds of crazy things. That's not what we're here to, to discuss. Or that's not what I'm here to discuss. 
So if if somebody says, oh, the whole state's victimized, just bring in a person and, and, and tell me who that person was that I harmed. And I think that there were some pretty good examples from the people who opposed this bill. Um, maybe there needs to be some refinement um, in, in this bill. But I think the idea that we have 11,000 laws, I think 11,000 pages, thank you. Um, I think we ought, to, we ought to discuss that. Why do we have more people in jail than any place in the world? Th those are valid concerns. Well, basically, we don't kill everybody we put in jail. <laughs> but, but it is an assault against them. And we do steal their houses. And we do steal their money. There was a woman here a couple of weeks ago. She's not here now. Her name's Patricia Smith. Her name is Patricia Smith. She never harmed anyone. She's going to go to state prison because she decided not to use alcohol, which is a more, uh, it's a lethal substance. She decided to use cannabis, marijuana. And the federal government stole her house and ransomed it back to her. She had to give up $51,000. And now they're going to stick her in a state prison. She's a nice lady. She was assailed. She was assaulted. Well, I was just wondering, you keep saying, well, the police and the attorney general are all here. But where are your victims crime people? Where are they at? The people that you're saying are all the victims, where are they at? About 86% of the people in jail in the United States are there for a, a so-called victimless crimes. There's about 2.2 million, 2.3 million people in jail. I don't know how many people on probation, but we have. So uh, I would say... It's, it's easy to it's easy to find them. Look around. Um, I mean, I'm. Well, go ahead, sir. I'm just going to follow up. Mm -hmm. If you say all the victims, whatever victimized people in jail, they had to go to jail for something they did. They're not considered victims. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. That's Part that's, that's where. Where. Okay. Vices are those acts which a man harms himself or his property. Crimes are those acts when one man harms a person or property of another. Okay? So if you and I have a disagreement and I come to you and I assault you, that's a crime. If you and I have a disagreement and I walk off and I go, and I go to my house and I decide to engage in behavior, maybe this is 150 years ago, and, and, I, and I tell a black person that knocked on my door, yeah, come on in, I'm going to hide you from the law. I'm breaking the law. Where's, it's, it's that type of thing. I think the distinction between a vice, when you're, you're assuming that something that's legal is always moral, and we know that's not true, or at least I do, and I hope you do. I know, you know, many times we quote the Constitution, but do you think, believe that the, when the Constitution took place over 200 years ago, that many of the things in society has changed since then? And Certainly. If you look at the Constitution, we the people, who's protected we the people? That's two questions. Okay. I, I believe that the concept of freedom is never changing and it's constant. I believe that... Uh, that what's happened is we have way more laws than we used to that violate the Constitution and our natural rights. So yes, there have been changes. We have, we didn't used to have the most people in jail of any country in the world, now we do. So I'll agree with you that things have changed. And who's protecting we the people? Um, I think that when there is one of those we the people that's agreed, all they need to do is show up and say, I was victimized in this way. And if they were, I'm, I'm not here saying I want things to be held to skeleton. I don't, I don't take things that don't belong to me. I don't harm other people. I don't commit fraud, or I try not to. So I'm all for prosecuting something that I consider a real crime. But when something is just a prohibition that really doesn't have anything to do to a real crime, I think we need to question that. Uh, I think this is something I want to hand in. Um, it, well, go ahead, sir. Uh, one follow-up I may uh you know, going back, you know, because I, things were said about mm -hmm. Constitution, etc. Uh, are our people elected to the House of Representatives in this country? Excuse me? 
people are elected? Uh, the people that go to the House of Representatives, oh, are you they speaking elected to by the people? Tyranny of the majority? Well, let's talk about that. Last year, the people of the Senate, we are not going to engage in debate. Okay. Oh, okay. Well, I, I want no. to get to it. No. It's not a debate. They were doing the same thing. Yeah. Sir, if you'd like to have a debate, give me your name after. We're looking to have a couple of people debate uh, candidates. So. Uh, again, we have three branches of government. Do you agree with that? Um, there are three branches of government, the judiciary, the legislative, and, and the executive. And that was done by the Constitution, when the people enacted the Constitution. I'm familiar with that, yes. Do we have rights or not under them? Um, not under them. Our, our rights aren't bestowed. They're supposed to be protected. Some of them are enumerated in the Constitution. Thank you. Huh. Thank You're you, welcome. Uh, there's no more questions. Thank you very much. Thank you.